Hello guys and welcome back to another tutorial for M Creator. Today we're going to be looking at that grappling hook. Uh, it was voted in, I believe 80, 81% uh, people voted for it. So yeah, I had a, a good feeling that it was going to um, be a pretty good outcome. But uh, alright, so basically there is three main blocks uh, for the grappling hook. I don't think any of them are visible. But uh, there is two two grappling hooks. There is one that's when it's on the side here. So if we were to shoot it, you can kind of see that it's rotated into the block like this. And then there's the rope that we just destroyed. And then there is the one that is upside down like this, which drops down. So there's a couple different models that make up this particular thing. And they do have specific tags that... Um, basically makes the um, rope mechanic work. So I'll get into that in a little bit. So basically it's a range item that shoots a projectile, which is just our block that for a grappling hook. And then what it does is when it hits a block, it will basically uh, spawn the detect if there's a face there and then if there is a block that is not air and then it will drop uh, or spawn the actual uh, grappling hook block which is the first block at the top here so this one right here where the hook is and then what's going to happen is it's going to automatically detect and then say okay we need to spawn one piece of rope down here and then the rope will uh, automatically just keep going until it reaches a solid block at the bottom so that's basically what's going on here. And if we break that, as you can see, it starts to, it will place back that piece of rope as long as the grappling hook's there. If we remove the hook though, it will destroy the, um, the rope automatically and go all the way down. So that's basically how that works. And as you can see before, the rope is actually climbable. So if we do that, and then I'm just going to go into survival after I set the time to day, time set day, and then sur time or game, game mode, survival, and then we can actually climb up this rope and even the grappling hook is climbable. So all this is a climbable block, very similar to uh, vines and ladders. So as long as we hold the sh uh, space button, uh, shift should basically allow us to stop in our position uh, space allows us to go up and the directions a s d and w basically allow us to control the movement of where we go so that's basically how that works and again i have it set up so you would need a basically a pickaxe to destroy this uh, we can just sit here and mine that out and then we can actually go down with the uh, the rope there. All right, so let's go into Amp Crater now. And uh, now that I've basically showed you how it works, and it's pretty accurate when you actually throw it too. So you can basically aim for something, and it will pretty much go in the same place. Uh, there's been a few cases where it's a little bit harder to do in per like certain areas. Like I've missed calculated a, a bit on a few things but for the most part it's really easy to aim these with the power and everything the settings that I have for the range item all right so again let's go into M creator and then I'll show you how it all works all right so like I said before there is uh, three different types of blocks there's these ones right here there is our range item, and we also have a tag for the rope uh, to determine if it needs to be broken or not. And then there is three different types of procedures as well. One is for the rope, uh, and I believe two are for the grappling hooks. So we'll go into those in just a, a second. Let's take a look at the wall hook first and then we'll cover that. So basically what I'm doing is I have a custom model here uh, the rotation is for northeast, southwest, up and down. And this is the wall hook, right? So uh, we only actually use the rotation for northeast, southwest, but I have it set up that way. 
it is waterloggable and uh, the texture is basically fluid when it's submerged and it's on cutout. This basically cutout basically allows it to um, not have as like render as a solid block. If it's under a solid block, there's uh, rendering issues. I also have set the block item texture, even though that it, the hook isn't actually craftable. Uh, I've set a block item texture for that, so you guys can get the uh, textures and stuff in the workspace uh, with the procedures and all that stuff too. I'll make sure to provide all the textures. So that's basically the bottom texture for the particles that I have set up. Boundary box, these are the settings that I have for the boundary box for the particular hook. Seems to work just fine. The um, particular settings for the properties, I just have it set to wall hook. It's a material of iron. It's a uh, metal sound, it doesn't have a creative inventory. The hardness and resistance is 1.5. That doesn't really matter too much, but that's basically what it is. And the most important thing is to have uh, can walk through block or can walk through the block, which is enabled. Uh, I also have the custom drop to drop the grappling hook range item. So when the hook is destroyed, it will drop the grappling hook uh, range item again so you'll be able to reuse it. Uh, the tool able to destroy is a pickaxe and I have set that to the to be only require wooden wooden pickaxe. So that's basically that's all going there. Update tick um, for advanced properties I have set to four that seems to be a fair speed for um, basically spawning the rope and stuff like that so it will update every four ticks. Uh, the timing for some of the things need to be a certain way because if it's too fast and if you're to climb down the ladder at the same time or stay at the top then you take fall damage and all that other stuff. So I have it set to four ticks. The um, block on the map is set to iron so it looks like the iron white texture. Then does the block act like a ladder? So this is basically the mechanics to enable. So it's like vines or um, ladders. So basically anything like that you can check and it will allow you to go up and down, basically climb the block. Uh, the other thing I have is reaction to being pushed. It's blocked. So uh, basically it won't be able to be pushed with a piston. Tile entity, don't need it. Fluid energy storage, don't need it. Uh, the only thing that we actually have is a update tick for this and this is basically going to determine if there is air below the block and if there is air below the block then what it's going to do is it's going to replace that block below it to the uh, rope block and then what it's going to do is basically just reset the uh, state for it so it's not going to um, have any particular properties for the state so basically the rotation and stuff and because the rope doesn't act I don't think the rope actually has uh, MBT I could be wrong but it doesn't keep the inventory or MBT of the rope even if it has it or not uh, after which what we're doing is we're going to set the block direction so basically one block below we're targeting that block which is where the rope is and then what we need to do is set the direction to down. So with my model for the rope, uh, setting it to down will basically uh, face it in the proper direction. After which uh, we just are running something on the server side. So to run something on server side, what you go to is world data, scroll down. There is a block right here says is provided on remote um, slash client side. Then we want to do a not statement like this and this will run it on server side so it won't play the sound twice for the player and then we just add that to a regular if statement and then we can run it on server side now what we're doing here is we're basically just going to set the sound to basically um, cloth when we actually place the rope and we're going to play the cloth sound one block below so that's basically what's going on here. You can adjust the pitch and the level to your liking. 
All right, so that's all that's in that particular procedure and generation. There is no generation properties for this because it's actually a block that is used for uh, mechanics and it doesn't really naturally generate, even though it could possibly generate, it's probably best not to because it has an update procedure. All right, so let's uh, go into the other block, which is the hook. This is the one that is facing up and down, and this one is the one that's in the wall. So we just covered the one that was in the wall. Basically the exact same properties as the other one. Uh, the hook, I think, is a little bit different for the rotation, if I remember correctly. Uh, the same properties here, we need to make sure that we can go through the block and that uh, it can drop the block, the range item as well. So basically the exact same properties as the other one. Same update tick, same um, settings here. It's also blocked, uh, doesn't have a tile entity, energy slash fluid it doesn't have. And uh, this one also directs to the rope placement script right down here. So when we actually, um, we just covered this procedure, so I'm not gonna do it. So basically what it does is just spawns a rope, plays a sound and all that other stuff. All right, so the other one is the rope. And this one is basically the rope texture. I have the rotation and model set up here. And then I also have it water loggable, so even though it's pretty much useless to use underwater. It's still, I still added support for it, needless to say. The model properties is this for the actual size. The um, other things here, basically I have the block to not drop anything. Even though that I've set a custom drop, it will just basically um, have it drop nothing because I've set that to air. Uh, I set the tool to be an axe and the creative pick item to be the range item. All right, so the other thing is it, the material is cloth and the sound on the block sound is cloth as well, has a hook. This has a um, hardness of 2.5. I'm not sure why I actually made this uh, stronger. I don't really know. I think I might have just got the values a little bit mixed up. All right, so the other thing is you want to walk through the block just like the hooks. And same thing with the tick rate, it should be four. The color on map, I've set to sand because it has that kind of um, ropey color to it. So same as the rope, so I set the color on map to sand. So if it's ever visible on the map, then that's what it's gonna look like. And it also can be climbed like a ladder as well. It's also blocked like the other one. Uh, tile entity, we have it disabled, so we don't need it. And then no energy or fluid storage. And the other thing that we have here is the update tick for the rope. So this is a little bit longer, so I'll cover that right now. So what we're doing is we're going to test if the block above the current rope block is equal to a tag. Uh, it's basically testing if the block above has the tag of um, forge, hooks, and rope. So basically I've grouped all the hooks and rope under this particular tag. And that's actually really important because if it's not there, what it's going to do is it's going to remove the rope after. So I'll get into that part in just a second. All right, so if there is a block with the hooks and rope tag, then what it's going to do is it's going to test if the block below is equal to air, it's going to replace basically the exact same thing as the grappling hook um, actual anchor part. It's going to just spawn the rope, set the direction, play the sound of the cloth. Now, if there is not a tag with that particular thing above it, then what it's going to do is it's going to remove the block and then it's gonna run on server side. Um, it's gonna spawn some particles for the poof. It's kind of like when you kill an entity, it has those white particles that kind of poof out of the spot that there were. That's basically what's playing here. And then we're also playing the sound of the block cloth breaking. 
So that's basically that other part here. All right, so that's all that's going on here. Again, no generation properties. The grappling hook, uh, this is the range item. So basically I've set the range item texture. Uh, that's only really used for the actual grappling hook part and like the actual display part. I have it set up to only have one item per stack. So basically what this will do is it will make it um, only one item per stack. So it can't stack into multiple, multiple grafting, grappling hooks. And I have the item usage count set to zero. Uh, they say to set it to zero if there's only, uh, the size is larger than one. So basically um, zero is basically the only use that I have. All right, so that's all that's going on here. Nothing too spectacular. Just the uh, item shoot for the arrow sound. The actual spawning properties happens under this part. So what we're doing is we're going to, uh, for the item representing the texture of the bullet, I have set to the grappling or the custom hook. So what this will do is the hook texture is this one right here for the block item texture so that's what's going to be displayed when we actually shoot the actual um projectile so this is what's going to be represented here because we're using that block uh the bullet power i've set to two the bullet damage i've set to zero and the bullet knockback i've set to zero you can set that to how you want uh, the block model i haven't used the block model or bullet model for these i've just used the item representing it. And then when the bullet hits the block, what we're actually doing is running the other procedure script here. So this is a little bit more long for sure, but uh, it's pretty straightforward when, it act when I actually start to explain it. So basically what we're doing is we're testing if the block above is now there is the coordinates for the block position now if we were to use the coordinates for x y and z the regular ones under the minecraft these ones here then i noticed that there was a little bit of an issue with it actually detecting the proper location i think it was relevant to the uh, projectile location not the actual block location so i've updated all of these particular coordinates to the block one and it seemed to be more accurate so that's why I have it set up that way. So basically what I'm doing is it's basically going to test if the block above is not error. And then what it's going to do is it's going to replace the block and then it's going to set the top one to the hook block. So just the regular hook that's facing up and down. And then it's going to set the direction to down and then it's going to basically play the place the particles for poof, and then it's going to basically play the anvil play sound. Now the other one is basically testing if it's on the ground and it will, oh pardon me, north. So basically, um, oh pardon me, south. It's basically testing it, no, it's north, it's north because negative one. So negative one, if it's there's a block on the north side, then what it's going to do is it's going to place the block south and it's going to place the wall hook. So it's going to do that for all four directions and do the exact same particle poof sound as well as the uh, anvil play sound. Now, if it can't find a block to actually set it up on, so now remember it only doesn't have to be error. So it doesn't have to be cave error, it doesn't have to be regular error or void error. So if it's not any one of those three things, then it can basically place it. So it could technically place it on glass, it could place it on a fence post, it could place it on uh, a lever, anything like that, unless we specify in these parts that uh, it should not be able to place on that. In that case, what we would do is we would update the procedure from this to false, and then we would add our other conditions to it. Uh, for example, if we wanted to add a condition where it is not water either, 
So what we would do is we would basically duplicate that and then we would set it to water. So if it's not water or if it's not air, then what we're going to do is do whatever we want for it. So that's basically how you can expand your conditions for the grappling hook however you want. Uh, the other thing is uh, when it can't find any of those positions, it's going to basically set the run on server side. It's going to spawn the gem at the location of where the hook actually hits and then it's going to basically um, uh, play the sound of the block anvil landing and then it's going to basically just not do anything so it's just going to drop the item there so that's basically all that's going on in that particular procedure and that I believe is the end of the Oh, nope, not true. Uh, I do have that tag that I have to cover. So basically what I've done here is the hooks and rope tag is it's under the forged namespace. You can put it under your mod if you want as well. Uh, the only difference with the mod namespace is... So if it's your mod, what you're going to do is you're going to put your mod idea instead of forge. If it's your... If it's Minecraft, you put Minecraft there, and if it's Forge, then you put Forge, and then the colon, etc. So that's basically the only difference with the tags. Um, again, our wall hook, our hook, and our rope are all nested under this particular tag that is required to have all three of them so that they will basically work properly and not just start breaking on their own. The hooks especially because the rope will um, need to test if the hook above is considered of this particular rope type or the hooks and rope tag. So if it isn't, if the hooks aren't under this particular one and the rope can't detect if there is a block above, it's just going to automatically break. Uh, yeah, so that's all there is to it. Again, I will provide the workspace, the textures, the models, and the procedures in a uh, workspace, uh, like a zip file, so you guys can all download them and use them in your own mods. And the other thing is I'll make sure to... Yeah, I'll do that, and then I will also um, link, to, link to it in the description, so it will be on GitHub. So you'll be able to download it from there. Outside of that, that's all I have time for today. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.